Welcome again, everyone, and welcome again to the second part uh, in our series of our uh, CT1000 uh, tuner videos. Uh, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to walk through the tuning uh, process, the tuning procedure uh, with the tuner so you can see how quickly it tunes and talk a little bit about uh, how we proceed about uh, achieving perfect matches to our antennas. What I'm going to use for this video is I'm going to use my Kenwood TS870 uh, one radio that I uh, I really like a lot with this great audio, as you can see it here. I hooked up uh, the radio to the tuner. Uh, it's actually under uh, radio one here. And then for the antenna, we're using a dummy load. Now my dummy load also, I've constructed it out of some power resistors I had hanging around. And what I can also do with my dummy load is actually vary the load, not just to 50 ohms, i.e. perfect, uh, but also to 25, 75, and 100. We're probably not gonna uh, use that here, but um, just wanted to talk a little bit about that as well. Okay, so why don't we go on ahead and actually uh, throw a bit of a, a power here. Uh, as you can see, I key up the, the radio right away. Uh, look right here, we're putting out about uh, oh, 0.8 watts or so. It's in tune mode, so it's actually pretty well tuned. Uh, as you can see right away, it always remembers the previous frequency that we're transmitting on. It's a 14250. But as soon as I key up, it brings up obviously the power, but also the band. So I'll tell you what, let's go on ahead and purposely key up and mismatch it to some high SWR value. Okay, we've got to really throw the inductor there. <laughs> okay, so you can see right there, uh, I actually what I have in my SWR meter, you might not be able to see it because we might need to zoom in, is we... Uh, achieved a value here of a high SWR, uh, shows at uh, 6.3. Okay, now I happen to know that uh, 14250 was one of the frequencies that I've stoned in the tuner, and what I wanted to show you is that um, once we have the frequency stored, how quickly the tuner basically comes into uh, achieving uh, and finding an inductor uh, as well as antenna and transceiver uh, capacitor values, i.e. how quickly it tunes to bring the SWRs into a low value. Obviously, we need to be in tune mode. Um, if I actually go to direct, this is just a dummy load. So you can see right there, it's almost perfect at 1.05. So anyway, let's go back to tune mode. Very, very mismatched. You can see our forward and reflective powers here. Uh, go on ahead and throw it into auto mode. And as soon as I key up, let's see how quickly this thing tunes. Okay, right there, the inductor, and just like that, it has achieved a perfect SWR. Uh, as you can see here, most of the time that was spent in tuning was not in moving the capacitors. Those move extremely fast, but also their range is actually, again, as we said, either fully meshed or fully unmeshed, zero to 90. But it was spent actually moving the inductor into our, into our location. So whatever time it really took for this tuning, yes, it took a little bit of time for the caps, but most of the time was taken up by the inductor, which is why it's also important to start with some inductance values that is gonna get us pretty close. So as you can see here, we have a pretty good match, a pretty good SWR, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the frequency here, maybe to a location that I do not have it uh, preset um, let me see if I can find such a spot here. Let's key up again. Okay, I'm at 14,278. Uh, I think that should work. Okay, and because, again, we are tuned, let me just take my tuner um, out of the uh, auto mode and go back to manual, and I'm going to purposely, again, just get some inductances here and some capacitor values to give me, let's see here, okay, uh, 2.7 or so SWRs. And again, you'll notice that the tuner is again going to try to find a close location, but after it goes to that location by moving again the three uh, variable components here, it will then go into a tuning algorithm, hopefully, <laughs> if, if we have not saved this frequency, that will give you even a better match. Okay, so let's go, to, go ahead and put it back into auto mode. And let's see how close it gets. Okay, this was again a predetermined frequency, so we're able again to get very, very close. Uh, again, I've saved a lot of these frequencies uh, in memory, so I'm just going to try to hit one here 
that I probably just go down probably into the uh, CW or okay 14120 uh, let's go on ahead and mismatch that again try to find a value here okay 1.7 or so let's see what happens here okay so you can see that it was not able to achieve a very low SWR. It was like 1.09. So what it actually does is it proceeds in this antenna inductance transmitter uh, process to find the lowest one. You can see it just varied the inductor. It's finishing up with the transmitter cap. And just like that, it gave us a 1.08 SWR. Okay. So that's what I wanted to highlight here, that it's even if you have a frequency in the tuner not stored, not a frequency which is not stored, that doesn't give you really great SWRs, the tuner, it's actually going to go into a mode where it's going to try to reduce those SWRs as much as possible. Now, what we could have done here is after uh, the procedure that you've seen completed, we could have run through a second iteration to try and improve this. But of course, every other iteration we run through, it's going to require more time in tuning. So it's a fine balance in what we do. Now, what I can do here, it's quite simply, after I achieve, and this is a pretty good SWR, I can see that if I can try to maybe improve it manually. Okay, as you can see here, I got a 1.04. Okay, that's a really good SWR, right? 1.04. So what we can do now is once we have that, we can easily take that value because this is a value that we um, uh, just found and fine-tuned and actually store it my special function button here actually uh, I have it set when I push it down it's going to take these values and store them into the table in the tuner it's going to store this frequency uh, it's going to store the values of where the variable components need to be so if you're ever back on this frequency it will bring it to this value so tell you what let's go on ahead and test that right before we were in this 14120 and uh, we needed to, uh, after we, the, the initial uh, uh, memory uh, functions, we needed to fine tune to get even a lowest SWR. Well, tell you what, let me make it high again. And this time you should see that we're not going to go through that procedure, you know, 3.4, because that's a value that's already been stored in the tuner and tuning should again happen relatively quickly. There you go just like that okay so this is the process that you go through with this tuner and over time over a little bit of time of you using the tuner and having stored this uh, uh, memories in there uh, you will have a tuner that it works extremely fast uh, obviously in in the areas and in the band locations where you operate the most uh, you're going to have it adapted to you uh, which was something that i um, uh, considered in the design and um, relatively fast okay i also do not want a tuner that you're going to sit there and uh, have it uh, you know wait for uh, one minute or two minutes to finish its tuning procedure uh, and even as you saw that this frequency wasn't particularly stored in the tuner to begin with after an initial configuration of where the variable components needed to be it relatively quickly found an inductor value as well as antenna and transceiver value that gave us a very low SWR. It was 1.09. We fine-tuned it a little bit. Now we're getting 1.05, 1.04, and this is now stored in the tuner for any other time we might need to be back on this frequency. Okay? So as you can see, you can go to the different bands that you operate on, maybe start with one or two values initially, uh, have the tuner find a low, S, a low SWR for you, and then after that, uh, fine tune it if you need to, and then store it in memory. Do that a few times, do that with a few iterations, and you'll have a uh, tuner here that works extremely fast, uh, and it's really able to uh, follow you as you progress through the bands. You don't need to have any uh, transceiver or any sort of CAD interface, because again, just by the mere fact that you transmit, the tuner will pick up the frequency you're operating at uh, and the band. Now, I should also mention that uh, you really need to probably have about a half a watt or so in order for the tuner to pick up the frequency in the band. Uh, bear in mind that we are using a coupler uh, that has a significant dB drop uh, as well as uh, additional resistors 
for additional dB pads in order for us to be within our 8307 dynamic dB ranges. So as such, we need to provide it with adequate power so that our competitor through the Tinzi is able to pick up the frequency. Now, what we could have also done is maybe create some sort of an automatic gain control amplifier that will take the signal amplifier and then put it into uh, the Tinzi. So maybe um, you could uh, have a lot less power, uh, maybe down to, uh, I, I don't know, a milliwatt or so. Uh, but I really do find with about a half a watt, you really uh, are a pretty good spot to be able to bring an antenna up, uh, throw a very little half a watt power in there, have the tuner tune, and then once uh, you're done, you know, flip your amplifier switch and have a tuner that's capable of a kilowatt or more. Okay, I just wanted to run through this uh, to show you how quickly uh, the tuner uh, tunes and um, how the tuner, uh, once it doesn't find a perfect match, uh, goes through a bit of a tuning uh, process, a tuning algorithm to get close enough, so then you can fine tune after that. Uh, hit the like button, let me know if you guys have any questions, what I will do in the next video, we'll actually go and take a look at the internals of the tuner, I'll open the box up, we, uh, we're going to take a look inside, you'll see how I've uh, uh, constructed the stepper motors and uh, the capacitor inductor in there, and, and we'll go through some of the electronics. Thank you for watching, see you soon in the next video.